everyone. Today we're going to demonstrate how to take orthodontic photographs, the standard photographs that are your three extra orals and five intra orals. What I want to start with is getting the right equipment. So not only you need a good camera with a ring flash and DSLR, um, and macro lens, but you also need the right retractors. Retraction is the key. So what you have here are like these deep V-ended retractors. And if you have a look, they can come in various sizes. So you can get a smaller end or a bigger end. What you also have and what we love is this kind of lip retractor. Now there are other lip retractors in the market like this. But we kind of personally love these slimmer ones a lot more. Um, what you will also need is a mirror, an occlusal mirror. So again, some mirrors will have two sides, one for the child, one for the adult. Uh, but majority of the time, the adult works for everyone. And if you want, and if you're really struggling with buckle shots, you can always get a buckle side mirror as well. We tend to not use them as much because we find them uncomfortable for patients. So I'm going to demonstrate on lovely Sonia how we're going to start with intraoral photographs. So we're going to take a frontal, buckle left, buckle right, a mandibular occlusal and a maxillary occlusal. So everybody does photography differently. You might uh, want to use an overhead light. Generally, you shouldn't need to if you have a good ring flash. Um, you can have the patient upright or slightly reclining, um, a higher height, lower height, but that is up to you. So learn what is right for you. Um, also, we've got uh, Maria here who's going to help now teach you how to retract. Retraction is key to get good photographs, okay? So we've got the right retractors here and we're going to start with the intraoral frontal. What you'll notice, the patient has to be told that they will feel a little bit of a stretch. There is a slight discomfort when we take photographs intraorally. And you must tell the patient to bite on all the back teeth. So all the posteriors must be touching in centric occlusion. Now, sometimes patients will tip their heads up or down. Make sure again, it's the occlusal plane is as parallel to the floor as possible. It makes it easier for the photographer to take the right view. So we've got um, a photograph that we've just taken intra oral frontal. And now we're going to take photos of the buckle left and right. Now, as you notice, we're not using mirrors here. So we're going to relax this a bit and we're going to stretch this. Make sure patient's still biting. They're not posturing forwards. And you want a clusal plane parallel to the floor. Here we go. And you must see the first molars at least. What we're doing here, we've now turned the patient's head to get the left buckle view. As you notice, this is being relaxed slightly and that is being stretched up and back. And again, occlusal plane parallel to the floor. We're taking a shot, watch the angle of the photographer. We're taking a shot, coming quite close so at this distance. And now we're going to take our two occlusal shots. So we've got maxillary and mandibular. Um, we will need a heated mirror. So we've got a mirror that's warmed up to prevent fogging. You want to be taking the shot of the mirror, not the teeth, when you do a clusal photograph. So the camera points to the mirror and get the patient to open as wide as possible. You must get at least the first molars, preferably the second molars as well. Now we will take the mandibular shot. The lip retractor. It's a good idea to make sure that the tongue is at the back of the mirror. If that is not possible, the tongue should be resting. You should be able to still see all the teeth, especially occlusal surfaces. Again, pointing the camera at the mirror as at 90 degree as possible. Now we're going to take three extra oral shots, one of the frontal face, one frontal smiling, and one of the profile. Generally, we take the right profile, but it doesn't matter if you take left, just be consistent with every photograph and every patient that you take. So it's as standardized as possible. One of the key things is that your camera, again, patient is in natural head position, so eyes parallel to the floor. 
the chin is not tipped up or tipped down and also that both ears project equally in the frontal shots. So we're going to now take three frontal shots, um, three, fr uh, sorry, two frontal and one uh, profile extra orally and uh, you will need to adjust your camera for this. Often the f-stop has to drop. Uh, every camera is different. It could be f-stop five to eight, varying on that. So make sure you drop your f-stop for extra orals. For intra orals, you've got to increase your f-stop anywhere around 20 to 25. Again, depending on your camera and lighting. So let's do the extra orals now. So we've got a great photograph. You can actually see, you can actually see that uh, we've got eyes parallel to the floor, their heads not tipped up or down, ears projecting equally, so that's an excellent photograph. Again, an excellent photograph, very symmetrical, ears projecting equally on both sides, really nice post smile where you're seeing majority of the teeth being displayed. Make sure the smile is not half-hearted. Um, if they're not doing a good post smile, make them do an emotional smile. So. This is an excellent photograph. If they've got lots of jewelry or eyewear, make sure you remove them. And that's your profile shot. So here we chose to take all patients on the right profile, uh, just be consistent. And you could also take a profile smiling, but again, look at the natural head position. Eyes are looking straight ahead. Head is not tipped up or down. Uh, a very relaxed lip posture as well. Teeth together, everything looks perfect. It's so a great photograph. Thank you.